Hi, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live Funny Fancy Times with Kate Quinn. I've got some, mo some more fancy and more fun today. So, hope everybody had a good holiday and uh, hopefully got some good food. Maybe a little family time. A little, that's the key, right? So, if you're out there and you can hear me just fine, and if you can see the picture, let me know. If I need to make any adjustments, I always appreciate your feedback so that I can make sure you can see really well. So let's see if we can get a little more light on our area. Okay, so today is a little crazy ideas, okay? So you're gonna have to just go with me here. Here's one of them. The other one isn't totally sewn out because I was playing with it, so it's kind of messy. Can you see that? Woohoo, there you go. Okay, I'm not egocentric enough to think that everybody is celebrating Christmas. I recognize that. And I hope that you all just, the spirit of today's lesson is that the rulers can do more that you can see something in it that isn't obvious. And so the goal is to always inspire you to see more potential for what you can get out of your rulers. So this is a, a couple of random rulers. The first design is going to be very, very easy, I think, pretty easy. It's mostly about the marking. And then the second one is gonna be this angel and that's gonna use a few more. So I did put the rulers that I'm using um, in the uh, description above, so you can click on that link if you're interested in purchasing any of those items. As always, I always recommend the, the set if you can afford it. It's like getting one free and then you get a lot more sizes. So, so let's say hi. We'll say hi to a couple of people. Hi, Jackie from, Ohio, from Oklahoma. Hi, Susan Tapp. If you're new, we want to especially welcome you. We're, we're so appreciative that um, our following has grown and we're able to reach more people and share a lot of these skills. I think it's pretty cool that we have this because for the first 20 plus years of me sewing, there was no internet. There was no such thing as free classes and endless knowledge. And now I can type in any little thing that I have a question about, like, how do I do this fanny pack box pleat in plaid? Or I don't know. So you can get so specific sometimes. And you can get an answer. And it's just not fair, but it's awesome. Okay, so let's get started. So the first one that we're going to do is a tree and it's pretty basic so for the very first part of this we are just going to talk about very basic skills so if you're new to ruler work this is your first time then we are speaking to you okay but we will um definitely get some more complicated stuff i can feel a little bump in this guy so i just got to tighten him up got a weird little bump in there. Okay, so all this is is a center line. I've marked a center line right here. And I've chosen the same space here and the same space here. So you can easily make this long triangle any way you want, as steep as you want, as wide as you want. And you can even then put the green fabric on there and, you know, over edge it, trim it down, and then you can sew it with the ruler. So we're just doing it on plain fabric just so everybody can see really well. And all I'm gonna do initially is I'm gonna sew around, and then I'm gonna start doing some arcs, and I wanna end up right here after I sew around. So I'm gonna start there, and then the next part of my design will start from that point as well. So by strategically planning that I'm going to start and go all the way around my tree and end there, that simplifies my path. So that's always something that's important to think about. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. So my ruler foot is a half inch circle. I went ahead and I've marked the triangle and I've marked some reference spaces as well as my center line. 
The center line I used really just to make the triangle because that way I knew that I needed so much distance from the center line here and on the other side. We're not really gonna sew that at all. So here, we'll be using our spacing gauge to get our line, and we wanna get right to the top of the uh, triangle. So I'm using this to keep the ruler the correct distance apart. The needle and the foot are a quarter inch apart, and this will get us right to our center dot up there. So start your machine and then move your fabric and listen to your machine. You want a nice, easy rhythm. I think one of the Lindas out there are the person who told me to uh, tie my Notions necklace to the leg of my So Steady table, whoever that was, I just wanna say thank you. I've been doing it and I'm loving it. That way, even though it falls down, you can't run away. It's tethered. So here, two finger safety rule. We never sew off the end. If you need to shift, just move the ruler down, reposition it, and then continue sewing. I do have some other marks right there. You see that? I'll show you what those are for in just a minute. And I'll show you how I made them too. All right, just to keep you in the visual field, we're gonna smooth this out. So this is our bottom line and we'll just use the same reference line. We can even use this line. Let me scoot it down a little so you can see the line. Ooh, sorry, almost dropped you. Okay, so right there, we have the chalk line right there. I can use this straight line right here to square up this as I line it up. And that will help me make sure that I, I get a correction if for any reason I wasn't straight, you know, if I wasn't uh, aligned straight on the line. So you can see right here, I'm lined up right there. So that's gonna help me make sure that the bottom is nice and straight to the triangle. And then we'll move down. So as I said, you know, this is basic straight line sewing listening to the rhythm of your machine I'm gonna look right in the little cutout and I'm gonna get my needle right to that end point right there and I could line this up this way right here and I can just use my spacing gauge I don't have to rotate or anything I just think that it's it is gonna be easier for you to see what I'm doing so that's why I always rotate for you guys you know that's an excuse right it's so much easier <laughs> isn't that true we all know that, we know it's easier. You can see, of course it's easier. But if you have a big quilt, it can be really tricky. Okay, so we're almost back to our start point right there. So right there, we wanna make sure that our line is clean. So I'm just gonna pull these over and I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna use that spacing gauge and I'm going to try to align my needle so that it will exactly close my design and make a really nice, clean transition right there. And I just went over these, these threads right here to tack them in. And now I should be lined up right on my reference line. I'm gonna look inside there and make sure I am. Okay, all right. So what I wanted to do here is I want to create some fun swooping swags right here. So how am I gonna do that? So this line right here, I've spaced these a certain distance apart. And then this tick mark that is down here is one and a quarter. It can be whatever you want. It's no rule about how big it is, but it's going to let me put this in at an angle. It's forcing this curvature to come down and not be straight, right? So I'm lining up the ruler on the tick mark and what I wanna do now is I wanna shuffle down the line a little bit. Let's make sure I'm in the line. Okay, so just move down a little bit. How do I know how far? Well, I'll show you. So this is about how far I am, and I want these two lines, the next line, to be about one inch apart. So what I would do, let's turn this so you can see the alignment. I'm still gonna try to come down. You guys don't get enough of that. There, that's better. Now you can see a little better. Okay. All right, so right there, there are three 
lines. One, two, three. I'm going to try to go down enough that I can line up this third line on the existing stitch line. Okay, so we'll just maybe get one more. And once I'm lined up, then I'll just sew across. Okay, and same thing, then we can just move down. We're gonna come right down to that line, right where we left off. We'll try to sew right in our existing stitch line, nice and clean. Whenever you're using um, the ruler behind the foot and moving in this side to side direction, I always like two hands. Even though the grips are right there, we're, we're having a pretty strong pressure with the two hands and we're using a push and pull mechanism. So having those two hands is really effective when you're moving side to side. Okay, so there's our two lines right there. Now we're gonna do the same thing. This is the reference line here, and then the dot is here, so we're gonna line up there. And here we go. So nice and easy. Get your fingers kind of close, but remember, if you're on the inside, you always gotta watch for the little bite of that uh, needle screw bar. So right into the line, looking inside there, and then I'll scoot down just a little bit. And I like the ruler, you know, if I'm going longer than just a few stitches, kind of helps you get a nice cleaner line, right? So you can see this is helping us to make our nice little swags on there. So I went a little too far, so always come back to the ruler. Okay, and same thing, we can line this up. We can use our spacing gauge and get right down to that starting spot. Now this line might be a little bit hard, so let's talk about why it might be hard. It's a little bit longer, right, than getting all the way in. You know, we can't quite line it up because it's pretty long. So what we can do is we can try and just maybe kind of scoot it like that, using this kind of as the visual reference, and then we'll just come into the bottom. Here we'll just go across, and I know we'll have to sort of come back in a little bit, so we'll kind of do the same thing on this side. We're going to try to get ourselves right in there, so we're not going to have very much option. It's not going to get us very far. That's okay. We'll just put a little bit of it in on the bottom. We just want to create the illusion of that shape coming back in, so we'll just do that. Oh, I bobbled it. That's okay, that happens, you know it happens. All right, so what are we gonna do now? We got these cute little lines. So let's go back up to here, and I'm going to just put this on here, and I'm gonna mark a little reference line for you. So since our line is one inch, this is two spaces right here. I didn't use a stitching line disc, but I just marked it in the middle. And I'm gonna come back up to this line. I'm gonna show you how we can do some embellishment with it real quick. So on this one, I'm just gonna start right there and I'm gonna sew across. And then when I'm on this line, I'm gonna start right there and sew across. So whatever I get on the end, that's what I get, but it'll be kind of matchy-matchy on the opposite sides. So the size I'm gonna use for this is the half inch circle. I absolutely love it. It is one of my favorite sizes. And this is the between the lines half inch circle. It's designed for working in a channel. So let me show you real quick what we wanna look for. We have the reference circle right there and we want to have the circle centered. So we can actually use the reference circle and we can kind of get a sense of how the circle is going to fit right in there. Because we are on a curve and not a straight channel, 
that means that we may not be able to go all the way around because the circle might cut into the one in front. So because the, the curve is narrower on this side and wider on this side, because we're going this way, so this is wider and the inside is narrower, I'm going to start sewing to the outside where I know I can get the circle in and I'll sew until I touch and then I'll come back to the center line that I made. So each time when I'm on this, I'm gonna go to this outside. You can't just switch because it won't work well on a curve. If you were on a straight, it would work fine, but in this situation, it can't. So I'm also looking at the ruler as well, trying to get it spaced right in between, and that's gonna help us put our little tinsel ornaments right in the middle. And if they're a little bit off, I really don't care, right? It's okay. Nobody's gonna look at it and say, you're, that one ornament is wonky. Then you just tell them if they're a Grinch, right? And the Grinch has got to take it back to uh, the workshop and fix it. No, don't let them have it. Give it to somebody who says, oh, it's awesome. That is so beautiful. Honey's cooking today. He's making enchiladas. So we have the kids coming. Our kids live right in the neighborhood and, and most of them live here. So they are they have a dinner on Sunday. All right. So I think we, we got lucky. I think we'll get this whole thing in here. When we're down to this last one, you know, if you're gonna go outside the boundary, don't. If you're touching, which I think I'm really close to touching, I think I, I can make that fit perfectly. So that's totally luck. You can't ever count on getting the exact amount if you don't uh, plan ahead. So I just got lucky. So let's show you what it looks like so far. Doesn't that look cool? What I think would be really cool is to have a green fabric tree and then maybe do these in like a gold metallic or do these in red. I think it would look so cool. So what I would do now is, um, let's just travel on up here. This is that spacing gauge. And so you can see you could do a line of gold and a line of red. You can do a line with nothing in it. You don't have to um, put the center line in. Oh, darn it. So look, I didn't mark. Let's see, can we do it without marking? Let's try it. We'll see what happens. I think the marking is a lot easier, but I think we can still do it. So for those people out there that don't like to mark, this is for you. Okay, I know there are I know there are some of you out there. I'm a mark girl. I like to mark and I like to pin. All right. So honey's gonna start checking through and see if you guys have any questions for me. So right here, as we look at the little reference circle. We're looking at these channel lines to keep them in the middle as much as possible. That's gonna help us try to get our circle in the middle. Again, we want to sew to the outside first so that we can make sure that we are getting the, the larger part of the circle and then we'll touch and back to the center. Here's where I'm looking right here on the center reference line. So that'll help us make sure that we can get everybody in the right place. Okay, we'll just keep going around. I'm looking right here and I've got the same amount of space and always sewing to the outer, wider part of the curve on this one. Just keep on going, filling it in. And whatever we get, we get. I'm not worried about it. Like if this one's a half, I kind of wish the other one was a half too, but at this point, just fill it in. It's gonna work out fine. So here, when we come back in, we couldn't go around. So we wanna just be a little bit cognizant of making sure we're not cutting into the other one. Okay. So I'll take it off and let's show you what we've got.
Oh, darn it, I missed it. Here, we'll fix it, right? So just take a few stitches, nice and slow, and we'll just kind of grade it in and we'll close that. Nobody will ever know. All right, I almost lost my key, right? I almost put it away without it. Always put your key back on right away. I'm terrible, I've, I have one key. Look at, I'll show it to you. It's in my drawer. <laughs> I don't know where it goes. I haven't been able to find the piece that it's missing, so I don't know what's gonna happen to it. It's just gonna hang out until I find the right, the right uh, ruler that needs it. All right, make sure there isn't an X over the microphone in the video. Oh, Carol, you must be talking to somebody else. I hope it's not me. All right, let's see. Hi from Ohio, from Nottingham, from the UK, from New Hampshire, from California, from Pittsburgh. Hi, Di Warner. Hi, Linda. Hi, Marlene. You guys, thank you so much for being here. Okay, so here, here. So Cindy just asked, why don't you go all the way around? Template. How come uh, right here, Cindy? Are you asking on this circle why? Came in, yeah. Why I didn't go all the way around? If I if I sewed this circle all the way right here, I would be outside of the tree, right? So in order to travel on that line, I could just travel on the line in the ruler. I just think that it's it's easier to do it here and not sort of bobble that line and put the extra stitch right there. So what my hope was, you know, this one, look, it fit so perfectly. My plan was to have this one perfect and this one half and this one perfect and that one half. So you get that sort of crossover type of thing, but it didn't work out. <laughs> so here you can make an echo line right here to make this a framed channel. What I mean is if you did it like this, I'll just put one of the lines on here. But this is just to show you some variations that you can do. You can use this and do a quarter inch echo on each side. That would narrow out this space if you wanted to. You could start coming in and you could just start going like this and put some straight lines like that. You can take a different circle and you can put different colored thread and you could just make little ornaments and fill in these spaces in different places. This has endless variation, endless. It's so cute and it's so fun. And you can just put whatever little things that you want on there. If you have um, Donna's little star, you can put little stars in there. You can put a star up at the top. A star is pretty easy to do with just straight lines. Um, I don't have any room on the top for mine, but you know, if you're using uh, a six-pointed star or a five-pointed star with the crosshair square, you can just mark dots and then sew from dot to dot, dot to dot quilting to do that. So I'll tie this one off and we're going to start working on the angel. And did you have any questions, honey? No, it's just one. All right. So for our new users or people who haven't heard this before, I usually make a fairly strong recommendation that you would quilt with a 40 weight polyester thread when you're a new user, and that's what I'm using today. I'm using Isocord 40 weight, and the reason I like it, it's really strong, it's pretty heavy. I mean, it's a, a thick thread, fairly thick. It has great visual, but not so much that I can't sew over. It doesn't look unsightly in the areas where we've stitched. And it's very low lint for a new user. The strength and the low lint aspect are the two things that I really key in on. I think it's a very forgiving thread and it's gonna really help you not have as many problems when you're just starting out. So if you're using that type of a thread, you do want to use a top stitch or a quilting needle that is a 90-14 size. That has generally been very successful with that type of thread. You can use any good quality thread. Make sure that your needle is going to match. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna start working on our angel and let's talk a little bit about the planning aspect of it. So I'll put this little guy up here. So does anybody know how I started drawing this? <laughs> it's, a, it's a trick question. If you get the answer right, I'll send out a notions necklace to the first person right now that, that uh, answers the question. 
Let me get down to the bottom. Okay, so ready, go. Type your answer in really fast. I'm gonna be sending out this, the first person who gets the answer right. So what tool did I use when I started working on this and drawing it and planning it? Not, not the template. I'll give you a hint, it's not a template. <laughs> All right, I'll get it, I'll pull it up. My iron, no. I, I did use the 12 inch arc on it, that's true, but that's not the first one. Thank you, Sandy Feldman. Good job. You're the winner. So you're going to have to message me your address, okay? Here is what I did. I drew it. I used paper, okay? So I've shown you guys these so many times. We, these are so invaluable. If you're drawing and you're planning your designs, you've got to have these little guys. They are so important. So I did, I used paper and a pen and a stitching line disc. And the anchor for the design, let me just pull it out real quick, was this template right here, okay? This is spin effects number 13. It's kind of, this is the biggest one. I can't bring the camera back too much further. It's gonna fall off, I think. Let me get it tightened up. All right, let's see. Here we go. There you can see it a little bit more. So I'll turn it this way. This is the shape. When I looked at this, I saw an angel wing. And once I saw that, I decided that I had to figure out how to make one, right? So there's the wing right there. And so then I just started drawing and playing with it. And I used a couple of different templates that I felt could fit. And then what I tried to do with this class is I want to give you information that would allow you to create a design in a repeatable fashion. Like it can't have too many fudgy or guesswork or this or that or whatever. It has to have some rhythm that you could follow. And so there are some markings, but we'll walk through each of them. And they're, they're practical. They're just not complicated or anything like that. And we'll help you get those right now. So that's what we're going to do. This is the anchor for the design, but that pen and paper and the stitching line disc. So, so Sandy Feldman, like I said, message me your address and I'll be sending your notions necklace out to you and you can specify color. I'll, if I have it, I'll send it to you. Okay. I have a lot of purple. So right here, I have a baseline of my design and I measured five inches. And the reason that I measured five inches up from the base is that the body of the angel is created with this template, okay? And this template is five inches tall, and it has a center line here and here that can be lined up. So that's the first measure, is this five inch on the center line. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna start with that. There's not a million steps, I think it's like five steps. Okay, so you, you can see I marked my five inches from this line right there. This line is one and a quarter, and we're gonna use that for something else. But this is the center, and that's your five inch and your center line. So that's where we're gonna start. And we're gonna start right in that center dot. And the first two templates we're gonna sew with are these. So what I did is I played with it a bunch of times to figure out what was the smartest and simplest path that had very limited um, problems where you would have to restart, right? So all of this is designed in a way that can make it easy for you. So the first one that we're doing is the one inch circle and this is the angel's head, one inch circle. So I'll set the needle right in the center line and let's get all these little loosey goosey guys out of there. All right, and I'm gonna line up on the center line. So that's the reference line that we'll be using and that's gonna help us make our circle right in line, okay? So I'm just gonna, let's go around twice. That'll help make sure everything's anchored really good. 
Let's see if we can get you guys in a little closer now that we have shown you those other things that we wanted to show you. So we'll come up a little bit and give you a good view. All right, so now we can take this off. Thank God we have these little puzzle pieces. Makes it easy to get our templates on and off. Key is back in place. And now I can cut this too. I want to get some of these threads out of the way. I will actually trim that once we um, sew a little further. You'll see that we'll have some freedom to do that in just a minute. So this is the one and a half size. So it's a little bit bigger. And the reason I decided to do that is twofold. I'm making a halo and I needed some reference line in order to make the halo. But I also felt that that part of the head was a little too small for the whole body. So we're going to just sew another circle, okay? And we're going to sew sort of to the halfway right here. And now I'm just going to shift this down a little bit, right? Not exactly perfect, but it's still touching and it's going to make a little echo, right? Not a big one, just a little echo. And I'm just going to sew until I touch. And that right there is my little halo. So right now, I can try to line this back up or I can freehand it. I can stitch back. Here's where you can cut those threads right now. Right, everything's misaligned. We gotta line it up anyway. So we'll just get that on there. And this is where you could line it up if you needed to. You can use your spacing gauge and that'll get you pretty close. So I'll sew the first couple stitches nice and slow just to make sure I'm on the line. And then I'm right back to the center and we can take all the circles off. So that wasn't hard, right? Just two circles and kind of a wonky circle. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect, you can see. So there's kind of like just a little halo echo and then that's the face. So it creates kind of that look behind the angel like he's got that, that halo behind him. So now we're gonna do the body so thank God for the keys, right? This one, when you pull the key off, you just wanna be a little bit gentle. So this template is the two and a half by five and a half continuous border loop. And it looks like a fish to me. I call it the fishy template, but you're gonna line it up. It's got a center line right here and a center line at the bottom. And I guess it drew up a little bit. It's okay, it's gonna sew we're, we'll sew it, and I was hoping it would sew on the line. It looks like it'll go down a little bit below it, but it'll be fine. We have plenty of room. So, sew in. Go across. He's going to touch in the middle or pretty close. And we'll come back up. So, this is the body of the angel right there. And now we're going to flip it around. Oh, darn it, wait a second, we need to sew down a little ways. Let's get it lined back up. So there's a reference line right here. So we kind of want to sew to about that spot. Give or take, right there. Now we'll flip it around. This is how we're gonna make the angel's arms right here. We're gonna use this shape and this shape on both sides. So we want it lined up in the center. So you're looking here and here. So we're gonna sew it, but it won't come all the way down. So we'll have to cross over and come back up the other side. Okay, so here's we, here we go. So right here, we're close to the middle, but we'll have to freehand a few stitches, right? So just slowly get down to the middle, come back up the other side, and then you'll just sew the arm on that side. So we have the circles are steps one and two, and the body is step three, and that's what you get so far. That's the angel right now, that's the body. All right, so the next one, so one, two, three, step number four is we're gonna go ahead and sew down here and cross over. And what I wanted with this is I felt like I needed the base of the angel to come out a little bit so you can line this up to touch or you can make it a little bigger. I mean, it's up to you. You want to connect a little bit if you can. So here we can use that quarter inch right there. That'll make it touch right there at that base. Okay. 
okay? So I'm gonna look through my little hole, make sure that I'm in that center point, and I'm gonna sew across the other side. So how do you think it's looking so far? Are we doing okay? All right, let's go ahead and we'll just double stitch this base. Try and go slowly. We, we do pretty much wanna stay right on that line and make, make it nice and clean, right? And where we are now, so this is now the body. We've got arms, we kinda got her robe, and now we wanna touch right at the same place, right here. Let's tip it just a bit for you. So here, we're gonna use our spacing gauge and get right back to that spot. So just line your spacing gauge right up on that, and that should take you right back into that part of the, the angel right there. It should be pretty smooth. When I did it before, it seemed like it sewed right in really smoothly right along that other line. Main right here, it was able to connect very smoothly, so you didn't end up cutting in or anything like that. Okay, so here's our body. Looks pretty good so far. Now, we want to make the wings, so let's make the wings. So there's infinite variety when you put this next template on of how you can line it up, but what I did is I've got this line right here, and that's what I was going to use. So right now, if I wanna make the wing on this side, I've got to flip the template so that it's backwards, okay? Now, if you remember, we've talked about this in the past. If you use a template backwards, the lines might be a little bit more difficult for you to align because they're on the top now. So we'll go ahead and get our key seated and hopefully be able to get everybody in their spot. There we go. All right, so what I'm looking for is I don't want to cut into the angel's head or body. So that's the number one thing that I want to check. Right there, I don't want to cut into my angel. And right there, I don't want to cut into my angel. So I can push up. I want to land on this line if I can. So if I can't, I might have to turn him just a little bit. Like that. Let's see, can we do it? That might be a little too far, right? I think I want him a little straighter. Let's see what we can do. So we'll just play with it. We're gonna just make it fit there and there. The reason I had this line is I, I thought that I would be able to sew this and I could match it, what I did on paper, but it's not working out. So I'm gonna adjust. I'm looking for the quarter inch here and here. And I know that I can sew this entire wing right there and just kiss the edge of the angel's head right there. So we'll go ahead and we'll come down. And we'll come in until we touch. If we can sew all the way, I will, but I don't think we can. So I think we'll, we'll let that be good enough. At this point, I'm gonna sew back down to the bottom. Okay? And this is just a little embellishment that we're gonna do now. So let's bring you in a little closer now, since we don't need to see too far out. This now is an easy anchor point. So let me show you what I'm gonna look for when I line up the next row. Right along this plastic edge, I'm going to try to do a quarter inch right around where the angel's neck is, right there. So I'm just gonna put my little spacing gauge above the plastic, and what that's gonna give me is about a quarter of an inch on the plastic, but it will translate to a half inch on the angel. Okay, so we'll just sew another one. Because we have the same start point at the bottom, we should pretty much be able to get right back down there. And then we'll do one more and we'll do the same thing. Right around at the neck, we're gonna put a quarter inch echo. And we'll just follow along. It's got a beautiful curve right there. It's gonna get us right back down to the line. Now, we need to do the other angel wing, so I'm gonna line up this template 
and I'm going to use my spacing gauge. It's the same arc, and I want to get right into that line right here and stitch back up to the angel. So I'm going to make a little adjustment, make sure I'm right on the angel, and stitch back up. So I want to get right back up to the top of the angel's arm, right there. Okay, now let me show you what we're going to do. What I want to do is I, I essentially want to just copy this right here. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. I'm going to stitch up until the foot is touching. So right there the foot is touching and I need a half inch so that I can come in at the bottom. Right, we want to close it. We want them to, to touch, not be parallel. So this is a little bit of an echo right there. And we want to get right to the middle. Right to the midline. Okay, and now we can take this off. Who knows why we're making these extra echoes right here in the middle of the angel body. There's an actual particular reason that we're doing it. So if somebody else, I'll, I'll give you guys a minute. I'll let you guys answer. There's a, a functional reason that we're doing it. And if you answer that in the next minute, the first person to answer, I'll also send them a notions necklace as well. Okay, so that's where we are. So now I've got to flip my wing over to the other side. And we'll put our key back on. Now, one of the things that we, we kind of want to look at is how far down we are and how far up we are. So maybe we can, maybe let's take this off for a second. Let's see, to get to the other side, who's the first person who, who just answered that? The person that answered to get to the other side, it's not so much that we don't have to break thread, although that would be the way we would do it if we wanted to. It's a travel, right? So let's see. I think it's you, Lynn Drummond. I'll, I'll have to double check since I couldn't see, but specifically, it, well, let's see, who said to travel? To get to the other side, I saw that. I'm gonna have to go back, you guys, I can't find it. But the first person who said to get to the other side, that's the key. Because we could, we could travel different ways. We can break thread, we cannot, we could come over here, but this offers a little dimensionality and it lets us get to the other side as well. So look how it's gonna change. It's gonna create a little 3D in here with these arms and make them look more intentional, but it's also gonna get us back to that other side as well. So the, pers the person who said to travel to the other side, that is our winner. And I'll be checking through to find out who the first person is. So I'm sorry I can't announce you right now. I think I missed it. Okay, so before we do that, let's make some marks. I wanna show you the thought process about how we decide how we make this the same, okay? We gotta make it the same. Otherwise our angel will look like she flew the coop. Right there, I'm gonna mark the top of that angel wing and I'm using this as a center line. So I'll put my marker right there and I'll just mark a line. And then it's the same at the bottom. We went a little far further than I thought we were going to my little reference line wasn't that helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark right there. And the other reference I need is I need to know how far it is from there to there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll measure that. And it's right about two inches. So I'll mark two inches on this side. So I don't have to do all this extra marking, but if you want symmetry on the angel, like if one wing is higher than the other, you know, she is kind of a mirror symmetry the way that we made her. So if one wing is higher or lower, it might look a little odd. So I think it's worth taking an extra minute or two and helping her get her wings aligned. Okay, now to come back out of this, we're in the center and we need to be a quarter inch above right there. So on this side, we're going to use the quarter, the half inch instead of centering it in the middle. 
So there's our quarter inch right there. That's, that half inch means the needle will end right in the middle. And when we started the wing, we were down on the bottom, so we have to travel right down to the bottom in order to start the wing. Okay, and now we have a couple of reference lines that we made, right? We want this to line up essentially two inches. And right there, you can see we're doing well. We have almost that perfect quarter inch right there, just like we want to. So we'll kind of check that a little bit. And if we need to smush a tiny bit, we will. So right there, these quarter inch marks line up pretty good. And we'll just adjust on the bottom as we need to. So we'll, let me check that top piece. It looks a little narrow right there. Right there. Okay, so I think we're good. I think we should be perfect. So we got right up to our top measured line, which is perfect. And we should be exactly the same distance away at the bottom, which is great. Oh, did I go off my line? I did, darn it. Okay, bonbon time. Pick up your needle, pick up your foot. The ruler has not moved, right? If the ruler had shifted, I need to get back aligned, but it didn't, I just the stitching did. So I'm just gonna back up a little bit and I'm going to put my needle where I was once correct. And I'll just take a few tacking stitches and I'll keep stitching until I get where I need to be, right? So now we'll finish. So if you've never seen Bon Bon Time before, what that means is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick those wonky stitches out later when I'm eating Bon Bons in front of the TV. That way you don't have to stop your process. I do have those fun, funky stitches right there, but now when I go and I'm eating bonbons, I can just bring my seam ripper. Because I tacked it in the stitch line right there and I overstitched it several times, I can rip back to where the stitches were correct and I don't have to come back and do anything with this on the sewing machine. That bonbon time fixes it right then and there. So right around the angel's neck, we're gonna give ourselves that quarter inch, just like we talked about, so right there right around that neck space. And you know, a little variation is fine. It doesn't have to be 100% perfecty perfect. Just close, it needs to be close. So this wing is gonna go a little bit above and echo nicely right down to the bottom. And we'll do the same thing right around the neck. We'll add that quarter inch again, which will give us a little half inch rotation on the design. I can put more than three in there if I wanted to. I don't, I can put as many as I want. Now, the one thing that I'll tell you is we have a bunch of stitching right here on the angel's wing. We actually went down, we sewed the whole thing, and then we went back up. So this has got several layers of stitching. In order to really keep these the same, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch back up to here and tie off, not just stop where I'm at. So go ahead and line up with your spacing gauge. That'll get you right back to that quarter inch. And here, if this looks bigger, then you might wanna check your needle position. So maybe stitch up one or two stitches, make sure you're in the actual stitch line, and that'll make sure that you can get right back up. And here, I'll tack this. And then we'll... tie that off. So usually the bobbin thread will just kind of pull itself away and I'll trim these little our, our uh, angel has a little neck scarf on with some little wonky threads, but I'll get those later. So I'll flip it over since we have all those markings. I always like to let you see the back so you can kind of see how it's gonna look just by itself. And size-wise on the angel, she stitches out about uh, eight inches from top to bottom and about 10 inches wide, give or take. Um, it depends on how far apart these are. There's a little variation, but 
these come up a little bit, but this is five and that's one and a half right there. And then these come up a little bit more, so maybe seven plus. But um, there weren't that many steps. I'll just review. We did step one was the circle. It was five inches above the line, right in the center. And then the one and a half inch circle plus the echo and travel back to the point. Then you sewed the body of the angel, right? And you sewed down to the first reference line. And then you flipped that whole template and you sewed the arms and that got you over to the side. And then you can use your 12 inch arc to finish the body and travel across the base and up. So let's see, one, two, three. So this 12 inch arc was step four. And then the wings on this side was step five. And then we sewed across step six and the wings on this side, step seven. So it's very logical and there was it was continuous and it's cute. And you can put gold thread. And the other thing I thought of doing, so what we're gonna talk about for just a second is possibilities. So let me grab a couple of things that I have here. So this is the between the lines and this is the one inch. So it's a one inch half circle S-curve on this side and it's shallower on this side. So I think this would also make a great tree and it would allow you to have just a ruffle on the, the lines of the trees. So you could just make the triangle and have straight lines spaced one inch or one and a half inches apart. But instead of having them sewn straight, sew them with this ruffle, they look awesome. So that's another idea that you can use as far as making your tree. And then, I wanted to show you some different ideas for what could be an angel wing. And it depends on what size that you're gonna do. But like right here, you could literally sew that and you could have a line and put some shape in here and an angel head in here. That could be an angel right there, right? And now here's another one. So this is the feather leaf, and of course they're in different sizes. So if you wanted to use that, you could make smaller angels, bigger angels, it's up to you. The spin effects number 13 also comes in multiple sizes, so you could make little baby angels if you wanted to. This is circles on quilts wreath number 41, and it has a foot anchor position right here. And I think this would make an amazing flying angel wing if you wanted to use that. So this could also be a pretty fantastic wing on your angel, and then you can just make the bodies. And the bodies can be, doesn't have to be this template. It could just be your 12 inch arc. You know, you could have just come from here to here and made that as an arc with the base. And you could do a half circle in here to close that. So let me show you one other idea I think would be really cute. If you like the primitive style designs, here is a wing that I think would be completely awesome, or you could even make your angel holding a little heart in the center, so she could be holding on to a heart in the middle. But this right here, I think, could make a terrific wing right there for an angel as well. So the concept of, of where we're going is we just want you to be able to use your imagination effectively and be able to visualize some of the fun ideas that you can have you don't have to have exactly the template that I have. You still can make an angel using what you have as long as you have, you know, crazy imagination, right? <laughs> so let's see. I'll see if I can get some questions answered real quick. I got to scroll down to the bottom. So, honey, yeah, Linda, Dean, I thought about using the Paisley too. The reason I didn't bring it up um, for this this particular class is it's a little small. I think it would make a great feather on a smaller angel. And I, I had to scale, like I told you, the circle size on this one was one inch. And of course, that's too small of a head for this body. But we don't have a three quarter inch head. We only had the next size up as one and a half. So this is where your echo rings might be able to help you because you could get just a little bit bigger circle or smaller circle, you know, depending on which circles you have and then how you use the echoes. So that's why those stitching line discs would be so useful. Yeah, hearts and feathers, are, I think the hearts would be great because they can flip easily. But 
you saw that we needed to make some reference uh, markings in order to create the symmetry, you're going to have that with any anything that you use. If you use a heart, you're going to have to put some you know, marks or arrows or dots or reference lines on it so that you can line up the hearts. Like maybe if you had a heart and this through the neck was your center line, well, the heart has a ready center line, whereas this, this template does not. This one has um, a center going this way, but it does not have a center going this way. So you can always add those reference lines if you wanted to, and that can help you and give you that, you know, kind of sensation of information that you want. So go ahead and use your imagination and use some great reference lines. So let's see, Cindy Barker, um, what was the circles? Um, what number was the circles? So for your reference, I use all between the lines. This is the between the lines one inch circle. And this size is available in the set or with the fun and fancy. And this one is the one and a half. And I think that comes with one of our, maybe our spring collection has a circle, I'm not sure. So one and a half, and that was both of those lines. And then when I did the tree and I did the little swag, this is the half inch circle. And you can use any type of circle, like you could use the um, artisan circle, the same, it's the same alignment. I mean, a circle is a circle. If you have the simple circle, you're going to have um, four different sizes of circles. They have um, the same size here. They have one, one and a half, two, two and a half in the first simple circle. And this would be available, but the really small ones, the quarter inch ones are only in the between the lines set. So that one is like the super tiniest circle. Let's see if I can grab that. So this is the smallest circle that we have in a template like this. This is the between the lines and that's going to make tiny little pearl channels. It's like you go and you're done. So it sews out really tight because the foot fills most of that. So you just go like that and you get a really tiny circle. But if you're doing any kind of like chains or pearls, this one and the half inch are my favorite. And, and you can see this could be really fun and you could just put endless fills in here in this space. You can even put um, channels of different fabric in there and then stitch it and then trim it you know, like put a, put a fusible, or this would be great for template. If you, if you like template, this would be awesome for that. You can cut these sections out and then have, you know, fun Christmas fabric here and then have your gold fabric here with the red, you know, beads or something like that. So anyway, lots and lots of options for you. All right, let's see how we're doing. Question, questions. Um, so... Carla Swainston, I'll answer your question. So I, I work a lot during the week. In fact, my husband is uh, constantly saying, you know, are you, are you taking that break or are you taking care of other family things? And I don't have time to make handouts for this class because I'm usually working on stuff that is stuff I have to do because I'm getting paid for a class. So I hope you'll just enjoy it and you can write those. Um, like I said, this, you can do any size. The only thing that you needed here was the center line and then the marks here are the same distance apart. You, so you can make your tree as tall as you want. And I would just, you know, if you weren't sure of where you wanted these, you could just put a few marks. So I put straight lines and I just made the reference line so that the one came down a little further. So you can just make a mark an inch down or inch and a quarter, whatever you want. However steep you want that angle to be, you're just gonna put that reference dot down from your reference line. And then I just echoed that. So these are a one inch channel here. And then on this one, the only reference marks that you needed was you needed a center line, right? And you needed from the center line up to there is five inches, that's it then all you're doing is you're lining up the circles and when you get here you're sewing the body of that cbl and the 12 inch arc comes right down to the bottom so there's not a lot of marking necessary for this um, you really have just that center line and the base and then what we marked right here 
once we sewed this first wing, we just measured how far down it was and how far up it was from the base. And the only purpose of that was just to make it symmetrical. So there's very limited marking here for any of these. So I hope that, you know, the, the video will be available and it'll be available for a lot of time. I mean, we're not putting it down, even though Christmas is, you know, is coming quickly, but we'll, we'll keep it up. So you'll have an opportunity to do it. So I'll, I'll put this out there. <laughs> I will, uh, until the 6th of January, I will be having the angel challenge. Okay. You don't have to make my angel, but if you send me a picture of an angel that you quilted with templates, anything of our So Steady products, it doesn't have to be Westerly, it could be any of our So Steady products. You can be as creative as you want. You can do basic angel. You can do all kinds of quilty stuff on it, whatever. If you sent me a picture, I'm gonna create a collage of everybody that sends me one and will uh, pick a random winner because it's not about how much better you are than somebody else. We're not voting on it or anything like that. I will enter people's names into a drawing and we'll have a random winner and I will put all the pictures out there. So you have to be comfortable with your angel being shown. Um, and if you don't want your name on it, then that's fine too. I don't mind, I, I, but I have to be able to show it and you know put your incognito name on it. So January 6th, I'll be taking all of the angels and we'll make a visual collage and I'll draw a random winner and I'll announce that winner on January 6th. So the concept is just play, play. You can just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's recognizable as a basic angel figure. It could be flying, sitting, sleeping, I don't care, whatever. Um, so I will... Uh, I will offer out a free template to the winner of that event. Free template of my choice, if you don't mind. So um, if you don't have the Spinifex 13, I will choose that particular one and I'll, I'll even send you the big one because it's awesome. It's this one, I'll send you this one. So that's our winner. And I need to have enough people participate. So come on, you guys, you could do it. 25 people need to participate so we can draw a winner. That's fair, right? Okay, so anyway, that's all I have. I don't know what time it is. I have no idea. I don't know if I've used up my time or not. We're a little bit early. I guess I should have prepared more. I was worried that it would take a long time, but it didn't. So let me just check real quick if we have any last questions and then I will say goodbye. I, Linda Dean Lord, I have to answer you because you said, I, I know that you rewatch and you draw out everything. You have an amazing notebook. You're so cool. I love it. Thank you, Sheena Reed. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, screenshots is fine. You know, I'm happy to do that. If you want to take a screenshot, if you share it out, please give credit. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not like overly punitive or anything like that, but you know, just say where you got it. Maybe they'll Subscribe to my YouTube page or something. I don't know. All right. So maybe next week we'll um, try to work on some kind of wreath or something like this. Or if you have a suggestion, if you have like a holiday suggestion for something that you're interested in, then I would love to hear from you because I get tired. <laughs> my brain gets tired. So if you have some good ideas, put them on here. I'll definitely check through and see if there's anything I can do. It's all based on what I have. Somebody recently asked me to do a sample for them and I don't have those templates, so I can't do it. I mean, I could get them, but hmm. Okay. Good question, Mary Sterling. If you will send the picture to info at fabricatedquilts.com info at fabricated with a k f-a-b-r-i-k-a-t-e-d quilts.com or you can put it on facebook under my facebook you can message me i'm fabricated quilts on on facebook so you can send it to me any of those ways and i'll be happy to receive it i'll acknowledge you and i will also note that i have put your name on the list for the drawing okay so yeah, so Ruth Ann McCauley, we just announced it. 
We just announced the contest. <laughs> So the contest is the angel contest. So I'll put more information out about it on my Facebook page. So um, I'll put the picture of the angel and I'll put the, you know, rules or whatever. There's not very many rules. It's just what you'll win and what the deadline is and stuff like that. So I'll put that out. And if you respond to that post, you can put your picture right in there. That's totally fine. Um, okay. So let's see how we're doing. All right, well, I'm almost down to the bottom of all of our comments. So if you can do me a favor, you remember what I said, you gotta please like, comment, and share if this was useful for you. So I would appreciate that, and that way my boss knows that I'm doing a good job. Yeah, you know Pat's my boss, right? Hen Honey is my boss. <laughs> He's such a great helper. We have a good team. All righty, well, you guys, thank you so much for your time and your attention. Have a great day, and I will talk to you next week. And we will we'll have one more Christmas-themed something or other, I think. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be Christmas, Cindy. It could be anything. If I can't use it next week, I'll just, you know, put it on the list until an appropriate time. So we try to be diverse. We also try to have different skill levels. So that, you know, we did something that was a little easier and then something that was a little bit more complicated. We want to welcome those new people and not make them feel like they can't do it. And then we also want to help other people that are more experienced and have more, um, you know, capabilities. Rudolph. Oh, Linda, that's a good idea. I'll have to think about that. All righty. Well, bells maybe. Great, Kathy. That's a good idea. That is a really good idea. I definitely could do that. I think Rudolph would be hard, but I'll think about him. But I think we could definitely do bells. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to say goodbye and have a wonderful evening. Happy quilting. Be creative. Get your stitching line discs out and play with them. Your tools are super valuable and they can do more than you can imagine. But you can imagine a lot. So I want to see what you're doing. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.